Hello, my name is Andrew Jawa, and if you're watching this video, you may be a candidate for shoulder replacement surgery. The purpose of this video is to first, go over the basic anatomy of the shoulder. Second, it's to go over why someone might need reverse shoulder replacement or a regular replacement. Third, it's to talk about the benefits of surgery, of improving function and decreasing pain, but to also talk about the risk and the complications associated with surgery. And lastly, I want you to hear from two of my patients, one who had a regular shoulder replacement and one who had a reverse. My goal in this video is to help educate you as much as I can for you to make the best decision for both you and your family. So let's go over the basic anatomy of the shoulder. This is the model of a right shoulder. So if you're looking at me, this is my right collarbone, this is the right collarbone in the model. This is the arm bone, and this is the shoulder blade. There are two layers of muscle before you get to the shoulder joint. There's one big layer of muscle called the deltoid, which is on top, which is this muscle. And then there are four muscles underneath there. One, two, three, four. These four muscles collectively are called the rotator cuff. It's called the rotator cuff because each of them rotates your shoulder, and in the body they all blend together to create a cuff of muscle like a sleeve. Now, underneath the rotator cuff is your shoulder joint, and that's the focus of what we're gonna be talking about today. This blue stuff is called cartilage. Cartilage is unbelievably smooth and it has no nerves. Unfortunately, it could wear down, and when it wears down, the bone underneath can rub on bone. And that hurts because bone has nerves in it. Additionally, you get stiff because bone is very rough while cartilage is very smooth, so it limits your motion. This process of the cartilage wearing down, the bone rubbing on the bone, the pain, the stiffness, that collectively is called arthritis. The major driver in getting arthritis is mainly genetics called osteoarthritis, but there are other reasons you can get arthritis. You can get it from trauma or fractures. You can get it from diagnoses called rheumatoid arthritis. Now, other things that we have to consider in the anatomy is the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff can tear where it attaches to the bone, and when it tears, it can pull back. It pulls back because there's some elasticity in the muscle, like a rubber band, and it can even lead to a second one tearing in the back. If these tear, the ball can migrate upwards of the shoulder joint and it can eventually rub up against this bone up here, which can hurt and actually can lead to the wearing down of the cartilage up top. Additionally, if the cartilage has been worn down for a while, it can actually wear down into the cup, which we call the glenoid, and it can really distort the anatomy and affect our ability to do a shoulder replacement. And we take in consideration all these anatomical factors, the rotator cuff, the erosion into the bone, how much the cartilage is left in making the best treatment decision for you and your family. So this is a model of a regular shoulder replacement. And in the regular shoulder replacement, we replace the worn out cartilage with metal on one side, on the ball side, and the plastic on the other side. You can see that white area. Metal and plastic have no nerves, and so when it rubs together, it doesn't hurt, and they're very smooth, so your motion improves dramatically. It doesn't make it normal, but it makes it much better than it was before, and it will make your pain dramatically less. It may not be zero, but it'll be dramatically less than before surgery. Regular shoulder replacement is a great solution for people with arthritis with the rotator cuff intact and the glenoid, or the cup, being in good condition. So this is a model of a reverse shoulder replacement. It's called a reverse shoulder replacement because both the ball and cup are reversed. We're now putting the ball where the cup used to be and the cup where the ball used to be, and the metal and plastic are reversed. The reason why we use the reverse shoulder replacement is if the rotator cuff is torn, the arm bone wants to go upwards. But by putting the ball here and the cup on this side, it can't go upwards to rub up against this bone. In addition, if there's not a lot of bone on the socket side or the cup side, we can get away with putting this plate and screws in position because it can accommodate for that loss of bone. So in both of those situations, and a couple of more, the reverse shoulder replacement is the ideal replacement. Next, let's talk about the benefits as well as the risk of surgery. 
So shoulder replacement surgery is a great operation. I love my job because patients really do well. Um, it decreases pain dramatically and also improves patients' range of motion and function. For patients who start here, they'll get your arm to about right there, uh, sometimes a little bit higher, and if you start here, you'll probably get up to there. So there's six complications that I talk to every patient about. Some apply to you and others don't, and we'll talk about that individually in our consultation. So there's a risk of infection. Nationally, the risk is about one in 100. Mine is about one in 1,000, so significantly less than that. Uh, but the people most at risk for infection are actually males under the age of 60. That might sound counterintuitive, but the reason is because the type of bacteria that causes infection lives in sweat glands. Men below the age of 60 have more sweat glands than women above the age of 60, for instance. And so they are at uh, the highest risk of infection, though still quite low. Uh, if you do get an infection, it's a really big deal. Everything has to come out, uh, has to be cleaned out, and it can lead to multiple surgeries. So it really is a big deal, and we really want to avoid it. We try everything we can to decrease that risk, but sometimes it is, unfortunately, just bad luck and demographics. The second risk are medical issues, heart attack, strokes, things like that. Very, very uncommon, uh, but is directly related to your medical health ahead of time. Next is pain. This surgery will help your pain dramatically. 50% of the time it gets it down to zero, but it's not uncommon. About 50% of the time people say, I have a one or two, but it's much better than before surgery. Four is nerve injury. Nerve injury is a really big deal, but uncommon. So what happens is in arthritis, most patients are really stiff. During surgery, we have to take a muscle off like a hood of a car, bring your arm to the outside, do the replacement, and bring it back. And in doing so, we stretch the nerves that go to your hand. Nerves are like rubber bands though, and they're stretchy. But the problem is as we get older, the nerves become less stretchy and they're like rubber bands that become brittle. So if we stretch them more than they tolerate, they can be injured or damaged, and that can lead to permanent numbness or weakness in your hand. It could be a really big deal, affect your ability to hold things or drop things or always have numbness. The good news is it's very uncommon. It's about one in 300. It does affect women, typically above the age of 75, more uh, than others, uh, but it's still relatively uncommon. Next is a risk of dislocation, popping out of socket. This is also quite uncommon. My rate is about one in a thousand. And the key is for the first six weeks, you have to be in a sling. You can type, you can write, you can use fork and knife. You just can't bring your arm to the outside and behind your back. And we'll review these. Lastly, there's a risk of a stress fraction, a bone up top called the acromion. This happens about 1% and it's mainly in reverse shoulder replacement. And it really, it happens in patients who have softer bone. It likely is related to overdoing it in the first three months after surgery, usually in patients that are doing really well. So we wanna go really slow with therapy. If that happens, you do have to go back into a sling. People don't love that, but it typically does heal. So big picture, shoulder replacement surgery is a great surgery. Uh, it really helps people dramatically, both in pain and function, but there are risks and it's about weighing the risk and benefits, and I'll help you decide whether this is right for you. I'm Ken Fisher. I'm a little over 78 years old, and approximately a year and a half ago, I went through a total shoulder replacement of my right, uh, right arm. After extensive uh, activity in the sports world, my shoulder just wore out, and I was having severe pain. It was very difficult for me to raise my arm above my shoulder, very honestly, or to even sleep or whatever on the right side. Everybody understands there is a risk in anything that you do. I knew I couldn't live with what I was doing, very honestly. I am active again. I can play a decent round of golf. I can still bowl very, very well. It was beneficial for me, muscle-wise range. Up and down, sideways, cross, it doesn't make any difference. My arm is perfect. My name is Abby Peterson Young, and the procedures I've had were both my arms done a year apart. I couldn't sleep on my stomach, I couldn't sleep near my shoulders, I couldn't lift up and get a plate for dinner, you know. Um, cleaning the house, very basic stuff, you know, just 
It hurt. I just got to the point where the pain was just extraordinary. Searched for a doctor and I found Dr. Jawa. The first shoulder that we had to work with right away because it was just incredible, unbelievable pain. It was really pretty, um, it was awful. So a year later, I, they did the left shoulder, which was getting, you know, incrementally was just getting worse. So he took care of that shoulder and my rotator cuff as well. So it was two surgeries within two years and I have full mobility. I can do anything now. And before the surgery, it affected every part of my body. You know, everything's connected, it's all linked up. I have no pain. I don't even remember what the pain felt like. I knew it was bad, but I like that it's gone. <laughs>